Hi, back again. We're in the second part of part two. That is capital raising. And we just finished part one of part two. And that looked at robo advisors where they use technology to get rid of the middleman. But now, instead of uh, give me your money and I'll try and increase the return of your money over time through robo advising putting your money into the best portfolio of securities that match your risk without the 200 300 basis points now I want you to give me your money but I may not give it back to you <laughs> what a deal is that Wow, <laughs> can you imagine that this is a business model of startups in the fintech space? Yes, it's true. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on here. Capital raising has morphed into the fintech space in terms of crowdfunding because originally, you know, you go back decades, it's sort of about equity raising IPO on the stock market and then it turned into venture capital and then it turned into crowdfunding and the first area of crowdfunding was in the area of films and that morphed into capital raising for equity and to other things so let's dig into this capital raising space shall we here we are right right next to me here and i'm pointing to it it's crowdfunding and it's a big monster. As you'll see, there has been billions of dollars crowdfunded and it is just growing ginormously year on year. It is a deliberate and profitable business model, especially on the finance side for startups in these times. Mm. So crowdfunding, or crowd-based funding, FinTech provides a marketplace for investment. It uses the powers of the masses. That is, you have millions of people each providing $10 or $100 to raise $10 million or $100 million. Ah, wow. What are the key brands in this area? You got it. Kickstarter and Indiegogo. They are the two big areas of crowdfunding for products that is give me your money i will not give your money back but i will give you a product something like this all right so here is here we have a marker and maybe it has a device on it that tells the app that the marker is nearly empty you know like a, an iot device ah i could display this now buy this marker if you buy now i haven't made this marker yet but give me your money now and i will deliver it to you in four months time that is my promise but give me your money now and that's how kickstarter and indiegogo work like you may not even have this past the prototype stage and then it's your promise to deliver this in four or five months time you just hope that you can deliver and there have been several startups that have failed to deliver and we'll have a look at that ah wow what are the types of crowdfunding well there are four different types and i've just really focused on the reward based crowdfunding that is indiegogo and kickstarter where you put in money the reward is a product or a service ah wow but there are other types of crowdfunding for example donation based crowdfunding where they are raising money for a cause, say Black Lives Matter or some other cause or for Save the Children or the Red Cross. There are, there are many different causes out there under the traditional charity model. However, it's moved into the crowdfunding area where actually you and I, we could set up a crowdfunding website to help fund a passion project that requires donations. In other words, when you donate, you're not going to receive a product, but you're just going to have the satisfaction of knowing that you donated to a good cause because this passion project of mine matches your passion for in the area 
in the charitable area that you are interested in. Ah, what are other types of crowdfunding? Well, of course, there's a traditional equity base, whereas give me your money and I will give you a return on that money. Ah, okay, that, so that's a bit more like the robo-advising type thing. Yeah, but this time I will not promise you a return, but I'll do my best to give you a return. But that is very much equity based. My promise to you is that you will have a share of my business. Now, if my business fails, then your share fails too. Sorry. The other type is debt based. That is, give me your money and I promise to return the loan back to you in the future with interest. Ah, and that interest rate may be higher than what the banks can offer. And that's how I attract you to give money to me as debt versus your alternative is to give it to the bank. Maybe when you give it to the bank, they can give you 1% on your savings. Give it to me, I can give you 6% or 7% or 8% or if I'm very risky in terms of my profile on the startup platform website, then I might have to offer 15% return in order for you to let go of your money and give to me. Ah, now what I want to do now is we want to get delve a little bit deeper into one or two of these types of crowdfunding just to give you some more insight into what is really going on in this space. Ah, well, here here is in this space. As you can see, the rewards crowdfunding is ginormous. It's a gorilla. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, it's it is a big gorilla in this space. Yes, followed by equity donation lending. You know, they're little they're little players, but the startups are really in this reward space and equity space. Rewards, Kickstarter, you've got Indiegogo are the big startups in this area. Any one of you could go on to Kickstarter Indiegogo and offer a service and raise money today. You can go and do that today. It may take you time to set everything up and fill out all the documentation and get approved. But once done, then you can start receiving money. Yeah, I'm, yeah, absolutely. Then there's equity startups like Upstart.com, Circle Up, Crowdfunded, WeFunder. And so that's when you receive money and you get an equity stake in the venture, you get equity stake in the business, okay? And so there you have the main players in each of these four areas. And as you can see, like this is 2013, but I tell you, you know, six, seven years later, the proportions of these areas are more or less the same. That is, crowdfunding is basically dominated by the guerrilla rewards followed by equity and then donation and lending. And we could get updated information of that uh, by going to the internet. As you can see, we talk about reward and equity. These are the big players. I've mentioned Kickstarter, I've mentioned Indiegogo. And here are some examples of the 20 most funded Kickstarter projects of all time up until 2019. Sorry, 12 months out of date try my best to upgrade these slides from year to year. We're doing our best here, but we can do better. Pebble Time, Pebble Time raised 20 million. Now that was Pebble Smartwatch part two, because Pebble part one was really the Pebble two, which raised 12.8 million. They nearly went out of business and they really got through in the end Fitbit bought out Pebble after their second successful raising on Kickstarter. They're both smartwatches. And then now Fitbit has been bought out by another company. And as you can see, some of the models of these startups is maybe to make money on the product, but more importantly, maybe to make money on the brand by getting bought out for actually billions of dollars even more. Ah, okay, you got cool as cool as you can see, there are a range of different products that it's amazing the amount they've raised is ginormous. So the question you must have if you are an investor in a reward based crowdfunded site, 
like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, will they deliver that product? This little thing here. Will they deliver it when they are promising to deliver? And it doesn't always happen. What if they fail to make the product? That happens. What if the company goes broke? What if they cannot ship the product on time? Maybe it's a delayed shipment. What are you going to do? You might lose your money altogether. That happens. Does it happen? Yes, I've done some research on this. Here we have over 50, there's more than 30 startups that have raised money on Indiegogo and Kickstarter in the last six, seven years. And we could have a look at how many of them have failed. Well, delivered the product on time. Have a look at that last, that second last row here. Look at that. No, no, no. Yes, no, yes, yes, no. As you can see, is there more no's or more yeses? There's more no's, okay? And did they, uh, did they reach the crowdfunding target? Well, obviously there's about 20, 25%. They didn't even reach the crowdfunded target. What does that mean? That is, well, I promise if I can raise 100,000 US dollars to make this, I will go ahead. If I cannot, you will get your money back. That's what we mean by reaching the target. And so as you can see from this data, like all of these promises made on these platforms, like they're just a promise about a future, but it's no guarantee. Like number one, if they don't raise the money to their target, you get your money back. If they pass the target, you don't get your money back, but the product may not be shipped. Ah, what happens then? You may not get your money back. And that's the problem that over half of these companies have faced. Wow, this is real. Remember, crowdfunding, there's no middlemen. This is startups using internet as a platform to bring buyers and sellers together. Ah, wow, amazing. All right, so let's move on to another type of capital raising, and that is give me your money and I will give you a, a coin. Have I got coins? No, I don't know if I've got a coin with me. I've got all smart money here. I've got an octopus card, that's Hong Kong. I've got a smart card visa but no coins, but initial coin offering is where you give me your money and I give you a token. What was that? Did you say token? Yeah, a token, and that may be a coin, but in the electronic space, when you're talking about the internet, those tokens are registered using a blockchain system. Okay, so the blockchain is just a platform type technology. It's like a spreadsheet algorithm that links heaps of spreadsheets together of data together that cannot be it's immutable in other words it cannot be pulled apart once transactions are linked in a chain all right that's what that is so the blockchain is not the token but the token is your promise to give an investor something all right so i promise to give if you give me a hundred dollars i will give you a hundred tokens right and so then I raise money and maybe people give me a hundred million dollars I've given out a hundred million tokens and you're asking well what can I do with that well maybe you can't do anything with that and it's it's how well I brand my token raising that captures you the investor to give me the money because you feel by this brand these 100 million tokens can be exchanged for other digital currency which may be exchanged for a product in the end like at the end of the day you want to be able to buy something with your investment right you can only consume your money you invest for a future consumption right so you want ultimately you want to be able to use that token for future consumption so it needs to be converted into another token or to a bitcoin or some other digital currency that you can use to buy real things ah so that depends on how well you how much you believe my promise 
that this token I'm offering you is tradable for other digital currencies. Ah, wow. Would I believe that? Well, strangely enough, millions of people around the world have believed these empty promises and they have lost millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. So be careful. I'm not saying this is not a good thing. I'm just saying you need to be careful. And this is one area or it's a business model that a lot of startups have gotten into in order to raise money for their genuine business plan. And their genuine business plan may be providing some product or some service that's unrelated to their token raising. Ah, okay. So what do we mean by ICOs? Well, basically initial coin offering, I'd sooner say it's initial token offering. A token gives you an idea that well, a token really doesn't have any value. When I say I give you a coin, you immediately think, oh, I can trade that for something. But tokens are not always tradable, whereas a coin generally, you can trade that for some product, right? You know, the, fiat money coin so i don't that's what they use in this space they use the word coin but i don't particularly see it as representative of what these things really are a token is something that it could be a figment of your imagination but you believe it's real because you believe in me the startup the brand that is offering the token ah all right so notice here that you know, ICOs, initial coin offerings, token offerings, have just become ginormous and actually raising more than VC and some IPOs in recent years. And it led to the SEC to say, well, hang on, a lot of these token offerings are kind of securities and you need to be careful here. And so what you've got is people watching this space where the VC funding globally is the blue, but then you've got this black is ICO raising. And notice it really peaked in 2017 until the regulatory bodies came in and started to lay out the definitions of what is a security and what is not a security. Mm. Okay, so so there you have it. There's capital raising. Uh, keep that in mind that what we started in these two, in this part, that is part one, was all about robo advising taking over the middleman, technology taking over the middleman for your investment. That means give me your money and I'll give you your money back with some return in the future. The second part or the second section was fundraising and we talked about crowdfunding and the ultimate funny part of this crowdfunding is these initial coin offerings because they have little meaning outside of people's belief in the brand behind the token that is given out. So be careful in this fintech space that is robo-advising and crowdfunding or crowdfunding, which are tokens, reward-based crowdfunding, equity-based crowdfunding, okay? And then, you know, donation-based crowdfunding and also then you've got debt-based crowdfunding. So that's this space of investments in the WEF, you know, the sixth area of wheel of FinTech disruption. I always call it FinTech destruction to this we're destructing the old financial system this is neil see you in the last and third part of the wf wheel of fintech disruption bye for now